Good afternoon, Pennsylvania. We are going to get started here in about uh, two or three minutes. Um, we'll hit the top of the hour and uh, get things started for uh, another onboarding and orientation to emergency reporting, where we are very happy to have you guys on board today. Um, we have over 60 people registered. Um, typically, we don't have every single one attend, but uh, we're pushing. We're going to be pushing past the 40 uh, member participant or 40 participant mark here, 40 person participant mark here shortly. So um, there has been have some some questions about the need for a microphone. Um, you're welcome to have a microphone, and as you have questions, what we're going to ask you to do is just um, type your question in. And then if we need further clarification, we can unmute microphones um, throughout the session. But in order to not have lots of feedback and a lot of um, background noise, we're going to keep everybody muted throughout uh, most of the session. But uh, once, we, uh, once we start here in a couple of minutes, I'll give you a few more uh, uh, tips on the overview for today's session. So um, just a couple more minutes and we'll get the show on the road. And if at any point anyone can't either hear me or see my screen, just send out a, a question or a message, chat message. And, uh, and I believe from, from your end, it'll be a question, not so much a chat. So just send out a question and we'll, we'll make sure we keep things troubleshot and uh, no, uh, no technical difficulties. So. Okay, just about a minute and we'll get started. It'll be the top of the hour. Okay, good morning, Pennsylvania. We've got top of the hour here. I'm coming to you from Arizona. Um, my name is Tom Lewis. I am the Department of Defense and International Trainer for Emergency Reporting. I also still do quite a bit of domestic uh, training as well. And uh, you're either blessed or cursed with me today for the next hour or so as we give you the run through of emergency reporting. Uh, again, I can't thank you all enough for joining us today. Um, we are very, um, very excited on behalf of the entire emergency reporting team. Um, we are based in Bellingham, Washington, and uh, our trainers are scattered throughout the country, and um, we are very, very pleased to be able to serve the state of Pennsylvania, and part of that service includes exceptional customer service, and that's what we want to uh, give you today in a very uh, thorough presentation um, in, in orienting you to a new system. Um, it's not lost on us that that change is not always easy in the fire service, even if it seems like it's abrupt change or even if you knew it was coming down the road. So we want to make this transition um, to a new and better platform for you as easy as possible. So um, in just a moment, I'll give you the uh, rundown on what we're going to do um, over the next hour. Um, but also with me today is Mark Yaden. He is um, our newest trainer. He is based in Washington State. And he's going to be my wingman as we answer questions um, throughout the session. We also have uh, Lindsay Merrillich on. She is our marketing director and director of uh, the customer experience. And she's also available to answer questions. She knows a lot what's going on back at the office, especially um, with the, uh, the PENFERS and the uh, Office of the State Fire Commissioner. Uh, the whole uh, the logistics and all the behind the scenes stuff. So she'll be, she's here to answer questions as well. Let me just make sure we don't have anybody else from the office online that I missed. And I don't think I missed anybody. Um, if I did, just shoot off a question, guys, at the office, and uh, we'll make sure you get, get you included. So you can see we've got a good team here to, uh, to get you oriented to the system. Um, the plan for today, um, we're going to cover the welcome page in our system. We are going to cover the incidents module. 
We're also going to take a quick lap around the modules that are included in the basic pen first package and we're going to spend time answering your questions. Um, probably the most important thing I can mention to you right now is the need to register your department if you haven't done so already. And I, I imagine I probably met some of you out at the, uh, the, the Pennsylvania State Fire Expo um, but last month. I've been traveling so much I can't even keep track of when and where I've been. But uh, yes, at the, uh, the Pennsylvania Fire Expo. So it's possible I may have met some of you already. And if you came up to us, um, we got you registered right there on the spot if you weren't registered. But if you are not currently registered with the state, um, you can access it in two locations, either through our site, um, which is the emergency reporting.com forward slash product forward slash pen first. It will take you to this page. And before I leave this page, I just want to mention that the link here to register, which I'm going to go to here momentarily, um, is right here. But if there is any members of your department uh, that aren't able to make it today, you can see we've got orientation and we call them onboarding. So you'll probably hear me use both those terms interchangeably today. Um, for brand new customers, we call them our, our new customer onboarding process. And then for uh, here, we're calling it an orientation because you're brand brand new to the system and we've got what close to 2,400 departments in Pennsylvania. So you can see the other dates here. So bookmark this page as a quick reference, not only for registering for the, uh, within the state of Pennsylvania, but also for signing up for these orientations. And you can see the dates here. So that page for PenFers, this link will take you right to this Pen first, uh online user registration. This is essential because the, the team at the um, Office of the State Fire Commissioner is taking this information and this is how they know you're registered and they will send you a login and a password to uh, basically get connected to your emergency reporting account and begin the process of putting in incidents and then uh, they will reach in and grab that data so you'll, um, you won't even have to do anything on that end. Um, by the end of July is that they'll come in and, and grab your incident data and use it for PENFERS and then push it on to uh, ENFERS, the, the national. So um, this is key. And um, instead of trying to worry about this URL, just know that if you go through our portal, click that link, it's going to take you to this page. So that online registration is essential. Um, so before I move on, are there any questions on the registration process? And just go ahead and type in a question if there are any, and Mark or our team will be able to uh, to answer it. And Jeff's already asked, is there going to be a recording of this webinar? You bet. I am recording it as we speak, and at some point, either directly on our PenFirst site for emergency reporting, we'll have the recording, or we'll have it part of our virtual uh, training sessions over here in the help section, which I will go to. Um, a little bit later in the session. My guess is, and Lindsay can verify this, is this is probably where we will park any recordings is right here. Okay, good question so far. Edward has got his question asked or answered regarding um, the granting system. And yes, this is a different account than the PenFirst system for grants. All right, so without further ado, um, when we have over 50 people on, so thank you everybody uh, for being here. This is This is fantastic. All right, here we are. So I have logged in, but let's do this. Let's start from the beginning. You will see this as the login page. The login site is secure.emergencyreporting.com, and you will get the splash page, and you will see over here on the right, this changes periodically, and it's announcements, either training announcements um, for opportunities for training for like our regional training conferences, of which we're having one in November in North Carolina. We are also coming to your state, dates to be determined, um, to do some regional training on site. So not only will we back up this virtual training, we will also be on site um, with key members of the Pennsylvania Fire Service um, geographically kind of spread out in four corners of your state. Um, that's coming. We don't have the we don't have exact dates hammered out, hammered out yet, but that is coming. So um, there'll be other uh, opportunities for you to learn the system and ask questions of our trainers face to face. This is, talks about our safety analytics, which you do have two of the gauges for safety analytics and time permitting today. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to, uh, to go through it. So when you log in, of course, it's simple like any other login password. And this is my demo account for Pennsylvania. So I want to jump in there straight away. 
So your welcome screen will look essentially like this without the orange background. This orange background tells me I'm in as a support tech and to not mess up with, not to mess with any actual data. It's just a reminder for um, our support team and our training team that you're in a live account. Now this is true, this is a test account um, for Pennsylvania, but what we wanna show you is, this is typically what your login will look like, uh, your welcome page will look like when you log into the system. The likely exception for non-administrators is that you won't have the administration button. So as we jump over to um, the administration module, which um, depending on our audience today, we'll, we may just touch on it and focus more on incidents and other aspects of the system. But in a nutshell, this is where you manage your account. Um, so again, time permitting, we'll, we'll, we'll jump there if we can. But this button will not appear for everybody in your department. And we recommend that you limit the number of administrators to your account to just a few, because this is the basically the control panel and the all access pass you know, to managing the system. So uh, we'll talk more about that um, a little bit later as far as setting permissions. Uh, so the modules that you have are incidents, reports, library, demographics, my profile, which is like your, think of it as your, uh, your baseball trading card for every member of your department. Analytics, um, both response and safety analytics, which we'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch on during the session, and then of course administration. What I wanna do first is to kinda give you a lay of the land and an orientation of this welcome page. We have a very user-friendly system, but what I want to, to make mention is some of the tips and tricks that you're going to encounter and then every user, frankly, is going to encounter um, because everybody gets this welcome page. So let me, uh, let me walk you through it and then, of course, just chime in if you have any questions. Of course, when you log in, you're going to have the header here and it's going to be welcome your name, today's date, and then the last time you logged in. Moving to the right. Now, this can be turned on or off depending on your, your administration. And typically for most departments that are single station volunteer departments, this can be turned off. Um, so by default, I believe it's turned on, I could be mistaken, but if you see this, what this does is it allows you to change your station or your shift if say you move your scheduled to work at one station, but you then get assigned, when you come in, it's like, hey, we're short on manpower, we need to go, we need to move you to another station. You can change that here. Now, of course, we only have one station in this particular account. So uh, there's, no, there's no ability to move and also shifts. And I understand with volunteers, this is probably not something you're going to have, but in case you see this, I wanted you to be aware of it um, on the system because by changing your station, it allows you to populate the daily log, which I'll go over here shortly, allows you to populate the daily log for the correct station that you're at. Single station departments out there, this you're gonna to wanna to turn off. You're not gonna to need to worry about it. If you are an uh, actively staffed department um, where people can move around, you might wanna consider keeping this active and that's done in the administration module. Of course, changing password, every user can change their password. And a couple key things here to keep in mind everyone is that on the password, you go into administration and you can set the minimum length. Right now it's defaulted to six. I think we can go up to 20. That's a long password. So again, if, if you want really robust security, you can crank it up to 20. Um, I've found that eight to 10 is typically where most departments are setting it. And it has to follow these rules. Number, lowercase, uppercase character, one special character. Do not use your username, date of birth, or email address. And if you try using the word password, it will not let you use it. Um, believe it or not, that is one of the most common passwords along with like the series of one, two, three, four, five as a number. So for good security practices, um, make it make it an, make it something you can remember, but don't make it something that's very common. And here for changing it, this is a couple of important uh, keys here. One, you can change it as a user and the administrator can change it also. And then can also prompt you to change the password on the next login if they want to. The one thing is if you change your password here, the administrator doesn't know it. And in fact, only way, we, and I don't think, well, our support team can reset it, but I don't even think our support team has access to that database. So it is very well protected, but just keep in mind that if you forget your password, it's essential that you talk to an, a local administrator within your department. And 
they can reset your password. If you call our support team per policy, we will not reset that password only because we don't know if it's a legitimate person in your department that truly has access to the account. You know that. And so we let you reset that password. And I know a couple questions are trickling in about turning off the, the, uh, the shift, the station and shift. And I'm going to show you that, um, Kevin, good question. Um, and I'll show you that once we jump over to administration and, um, normally we would go through administration earlier in the session, but I know we have a lot of firefighters and people that are going to use the system day in and day out for incidents. So we're going to hit that first and then we'll jump over to the administration module, but great question. Um, again, so the old password, new password, um, you can enter that and just like changing password on any other account that you have for your bank or for school or whatnot, um, very similar. The only difference is, is we don't have, I forgot my password and send you an email and all the different questions about, you know, your, you know, great, great, great grandmother's maiden name, all of that. We don't have that. It has to go through your um, ad local administrator to reset your password. So I just wanted to make that very clear um, and not to have you call support in the event that you forget your password. Any questions at all, everybody, on passwords? Okay, let's see. Can the administrator shut off a user's password and or access? Um, Edward, yes, absolutely. Um, and again, it sounds like we may have some administrators on board here, so um, this is good. We'll, we'll definitely go over some of that in the administration module, so stand by for an answer to that. But the short of it is, yes, you can, you can the administrators can, can uh, configure access levels to everyone in the system. Okay, next up that I want to show you is change my notifications. This, think of this as customizing your welcome page, your dashboard. So instead of, instead of having to deep dive into each of the modules. Now in this case for the default Penfers account, um, some of you may be full on customers where you have the entire system, but for uh, Penfers customers only, you have the ability to check these boxes here. Now, this is especially relevant for incidents um, because all of you are going to be reporting and documenting your incidents in, in the system. What this does, and the first two boxes are the ones we want to focus on. The third box is for patients, and if you are a full customer that has EMS, this is um, relevant to you, but for most of you, it's these first two boxes that you want to uh, focus on. So. Display number of incomplete incidents assigned to me. What this does by checking it is on the welcome page, it gives you a hyperlink that will take you to any incomplete incidents that are assigned to you, the person that's logged in. Also for reviewers, so company officers, chiefs, um, if you are responsible for making sure that the incident is what we call green locked or ready, for, ready to be shipped to Penfers, or I should say in this case, ready to be grabbed by um, Penfers, then you'll want to check this box as well. So what that does is it changes the welcome page ever so slightly to this. But what's nice is, of course, I don't have incidents in the system, but if I had any incomplete incidents, I can simply click on this hyperlink and you'll notice in most cases in our, in our system, orange text is a hyperlink. It either has some functionality, opens another tab, opens another web page, or takes you to um, like in, in not here, but this is not orange, but this would open up another page and take you to support. So we've got that. And then, of course, for supervisors, those that need to be reviewed. And what's nice is when you click that, it auto checks this panel on the left for completed calls that still need to be reviewed. And we'll go, we'll go through all of that in the with the uh, incident module here shortly. But what's nice is if as you go through them, you can check boxes here and when incidents appear, and update all of those to reviewed in one batch instead of one by one. So once we have an incident or so in here, I'll show you how that works. The next thing I want to mention about the welcome page and what I'm going to do is the questions are coming in fast and furious. So I want to make sure we're getting everybody answered. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Mark and Lindsay and Brittany. You guys are awesome. Thank you for answering all those questions so fast. Um, and I'm, I know as a participant, everyone should be able to be seeing all of these questions and answers. If you aren't, just let us know, uh, and that way you can kind of follow along as the questions are coming in. And will you have the, can you change the password often or can it remain? 
Um, good answer on that. And that also is in the administration module and where you set that. So Brent, we'll, uh, we'll address that here shortly. I think we're going to have a great, a really great session here. If we run long, guys, just let, um, because there's a lot to cover in a relatively short amount of time, um, it is possible we will run long. If I see lots of people dropping off, then we'll, we'll bring it to a close. But if, if we need to stay a little longer, we're here. So um, we want to make sure you get off to the right foot. And I should have mentioned, those of you that are watching us, if you're fortunate enough to have a second computer available to you, or if you're watching me um, in my screen on a projection um, device, a flat panel or a projector, um, it's a good idea if you're in, if you're able to access your account now. It's kind of follow along and click around as I'm clicking around. Um, we, what we found is learning our systems kind of like starting an IV. I can watch how to do it. I can take a test how to do it. But until I have my hands on a catheter and someone's arm to actually poke them with and get that stick started, um, I don't know how to start an IV. And kind of our systems that way too. When you start playing with it, you'll, the things will start making sense and getting that hands-on keyboard is a big deal. So if you have the luxury of having a couple screens available to you, it, it would be great to do it. If not, no worries. Just when you get a chance, uh, jump back into your system and start practicing some of the things we're going over here. Okay. Um, daily log. I love, love, love this feature. And if those of you in your departments that are using three ring binders or the hardbound um, diary type logbooks, those days can go away because now you can essentially track things that go on at the station. Um, and even if you want to document things that you're doing from home as volunteers, uh, you can do that. Um, if you're doing online training, if you're doing things that, um, that uh, you want to document for the day, the think of this as your electronic daybook and because that's exactly what it is. But the advantages here are one, as you all know, you can access your account from home. This is fully web based, our system, which means as long as you've got a device connected to the Internet and it has a browser, which is pretty much everything now from smartphones to, you know, full on desktops, uh, you can access your system and document what's going on throughout the day. Very simple entries. Uh, the red means it's a required field, and this becomes very important as we enter the incident module. Anything that's required is something our system or in, in the incidents module um, is a required field for, for PENFERS and for ENFERS. So um, here, of course, to make an entry, you have, have to at least have a start date. So I'm going to start now, but I'm going to go back it up to 9 o'clock. The end date is also today, and these orange, like I said, orange text does something that has some function. So here it auto fills these fields for you. Now, of course, these just fill the date now also fills the time. So let's say we go to 1030. And again, this is local time, Arizona. I know it's 12 o'clock back East. You can select an activity code. Now we give you kind of a default activity code list, but again, over in administration, you can configure this list to your heart's content. And so when I teach this, I say, if you like what we put, you know, use the ones you like, go in and edit the ones you don't, but ask yourself, what do I need to record for my department to one, justify our existence, to report to shareholders, um, stakeholders in the community, town councils, uh, boards of uh, commission, and you can then document the activity, enter what you did, and it has a little spell check there, Trying to type fast. Emergency reporting orientation. And you can also select an apparatus if you want to. And then your personnel list will pop up. And we just have a few here. So I'm just going to, I can select our team from Penfers. I click add. And it becomes an entry in the daily log. So you're probably saying, well, so what? That's just like adding, you know, writing it in the, in the logbook. But what's cool is under reports, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it down a day only because I want to show you what a report looks like. You now have the ability to generate reports on activity that your troops do. So here under daybook, you can go to daily log. I can go activity codes, and we'll keep it simple. So I can go daily log items for activity codes. And don't stress as I'm going clicking through fast here. This is this will be part of more on-site training when we show you and orient you to everything in the in the uh, the reports module. But what I want to show you is that 
I can pull out data based on activity code. Oops, I thought I picked one. There we go. For time periods, and if all went well, and it did, it shows that we had this training. So imagine all your activity by activity code. How many hours do we spend doing station tours? Um, how much time do we spend on training this month? How many meetings did we have? You can document all that and pull up some really great reports. And that's all done here. And my mantra is good stuff in gives you good stuff out. You probably, um, probably have some good IT people on with us today. You've heard of garbage in, garbage out. I like to go positive. If you put good stuff in our system, you're going to get good stuff out in the form of really great reports. All right, I'm going to take just a quick pause to see if anyone has any additional questions. We've had some password questions um, from Tim. Um, we're going to get emails sent out to you if you're having trouble logging in. We'll get that squared away with the State Fire Commissioner's office. Um, what is the cost to be a full customer to include the EMS module? Joseph, we'll probably have Brittany um, reach out to you on that um, and get you get you an idea, and then we'll connect you with uh, with Keith, who is the regional rep there, and you'll love Keith. He's from Long Island and uh, just couldn't ask for a nicer guy, and he'll, he'll kind of get you up to speed on what's involved with that. Let's see, Edward asks, does it also populate the personnel during hours? So, Edward, if I'm understanding your co uh, question correctly, uh, does it, in the daily log, does it also populate the personnel during hours? It will document how many hours that each person. So in this case, and, and type in if I'm, if I'm not answering your question correctly, but essentially Trey, Craig, Tim, and Christine all will get an hour and a half credit in a sense in the system that I can pull a report by each individual. You can pull individual reports. What I just pulled was for the activity code. There's a report in there for by person and I can say, okay, how many? What did Trey do all month? And I can have a nice report for that. Does that answer um, what you were asking? And if it didn't, just just type in, and we'll uh, I'll go back to it. Okay. Yes, excellent. Thanks, Edward. Okay. A um, couple other things that you'll need to know. These three buttons up here, log out, of course, makes perfect sense. It logs you out of the system. Support. This takes you. It will open another tab. And it will take you to our support page. I'm going to zoom in. This is a big deal. At first, this is where you want to go, Penfers. This gives you a basic rundown of frequently asked questions. So hopefully some of the questions that you have today will be can be answered here. Getting started gives you a rundown, a um, little video, intro to Penfers. This is the one we produced for the... Uh, for uh, the, the show, and it gives you just kind of a lay of the land orientation, not unlike what we're doing today, but this one today, of course, is more in depth. And if you are currently a firehouse customer and you need to export your data, either your incident data, your ENFRS data, or your depth file, which we call department information, personnel and apparatus, you can, these are the processes here for doing so. Okay, and that's accessed directly through the support button. But those of you that are going to become power users, and I know some of you participating today, you're here because you're probably the go-to person when it comes to technology in your department or you previously managed your, your other records management system. Uh, you, this, is, this is where you're going to go to learn a lot about our system. We have knowledge base articles on every module. We also have webinar archives, which are recordings of our virtual Thursday sessions. And those are the first and third Thursday of every month, um, with the exclusion of holiday weeks. And we record them, and you can join them in. You can join in live when we when we uh, have them. Our next one is actually going to be on July 16th to talk about CAD interfaces, and the recordings are here. So in case you miss it, you can just click here within about a week or so afterwards, and we'll, we'll, we will publish them to this site. Now, as you look here, it's like, well, they're all over the place. How do I know? You know, they're not alphabetical or whatnot. The little trick here is the latest one is on the top. The oldest one is going to be here on page two at the bottom. Now, old or new, there's still a lot of relevant data. It's just when we started doing it, we kind of hit the basics. And so you'll see a lot of these are the basics. And, well, maybe the order isn't what I thought it was. That is not an old one. <laughs> Daily rosters, ISO, and you. So the key here is, is how do I find the topic I want to find? On a, on a Windows machine, Control-F. On a Mac, it's Command-F. 
will give you, and it's really hard to see on, on Firefox for Mac, but down on the lower left corner, I'm going to do a keyword. So I want to learn about documenting enfers. It will tell me that I have three matches, one of three matches on this page. It will highlight them, and then you can just toggle using the up and down arrows to any of those virtual Thursdays. So that's how you search by keyword on any web page, not just emergency reporting. I imagine many of you in the room probably knew this, but it's a nice trick, especially if you're on a page like this or if you're on a very text intensive page um, and you're looking for keywords, this is the way to do it. So a little, little trick for navigating um, web pages. Again, I'm going to take a pause because you guys are awesome. These questions are just flying in. I love this. Okay. Um, good. Looks like um, between our team, everybody's getting their questions answered. Fantastic. Okay. All right. All right. Take, I'll take a quick pause. Any questions on what we've covered so far? The welcome page. The, this is the lay of the land that everybody is going to see and use. So that's why I wanted to make sure we spent ample time on it. Um, the help page. I need to mention this as well. This is actually behind the login. So in other words, if you were to try and, well, you can't because you wouldn't have that page. But if you were logged out of your system, um, the emergency report, your emergency reporting account, these are behind the firewall help pages. I love this because whatever page you're on in our system will take you to that help. So I'm on the welcome page, so my help page is all about the welcome page. So what I've been covering is kind of here. Now you need to know that most of the latest information is going to appear here on the knowledge base which is a outside the firewall. You can access this without being logged into emergency reporting. This sign in here um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but you can sign in to our feedback site and throw us ideas and then get everybody to vote. Now, I'll tell you a little secret. In Pennsylvania, there's a, you guys have a lot of departments and a lot of people. If you start having ideas for our system, you can go and, and, and present that idea. And I'm just going to jump there very briefly so you can see what I'm, it's better for you to see what I'm talking about. You can suggest ideas, but you'll notice our top idea right now has 867 votes. The power of networking and the power of communicating, a Pennsylvania idea can get on the radar very quickly because you have a lot of people in your state. And this is one of the ways that um, you can get this um, out to us. And again, we, there's so much to cover in a short amount of time. Um, we may not be able to hit this, but just know that page is feedback.emergencyreporting.com. So fun, fun stuff. We get some fantastic ideas and they are pouring in daily from our customers. Um, and then our team, our development team, um, goes through and makes decisions on how to push us through the, uh, the whole develop software development process. Okay, so support and help, two slightly different buttons here. One's outside the system, one's inside the system. This one um, is a little widget to, that also lets you see ideas that have been placed on that feedback site, and you can then look at it and pick and subscribe to it and get notifications as things change for that idea. And you can also re recycle it and get a new set and then vote on those as well. You can even post your own idea from here and this is from within the system. This other one is our mail widget and if any messages come through um, through the message center which that may not be Lindsay, I may not have turned that on. Is that an included module? And just confirm for me. My my brain's not working. Um, just type in if it's uh, it, it's not. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Or, yeah, thanks, you guys. Um, so disregard this, um, the message center. That's something we can talk about um, at another at another time. We do have an internal messaging system that is part of an upgraded package. And so even though um, it's not part of the basic system that widget may still appear in your account. So um, thanks everybody for the heads up on that. Okay, that covers everything on the welcome page. Um, next, what, what I'm gonna jump into next is incidents. Now, this is where you're gonna spend most of your time likely, uh, firefighters and officers alike. So right now, this account has absolutely, let me make sure we'll go to all time. I'm gonna show you the navigation here first and then I'm going to show you how to go page by page. And I know from um, 
from what Mark has said from previous PENFERS uh, sessions, this is where we get a lot of questions. And so I'm going to go very slowly through this. We'll take our time page by page. It's very, I guarantee it, guys, it's very user-friendly, very straightforward. Once you start running incidents, you'll be able to crank out an incident. And it, this is if you don't have a CAD interface, you can crank out an incident in, uh, in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes max. And the key thing to keep in mind is I use, I've been using emergency reporting since 2004. My department didn't get a CAD link until probably, what, 2011, maybe, 2010, 2011. So we were manually entering incidents um, for, what, six or seven years. And it's, it's, it's pretty painless. And, you know, some of the, the one page I'm going to show you that has the most kind of most fields for data entry, that's about the most tedious page. Everything else just flows beautifully. So let's start navigate the navigation. So first, of course, I'm on the welcome page. I get back from a call. Now, the nice thing is, I know, especially with volunteers, is you may you know, bring the truck back to the station. You're tired. You want to get home to your family. Um, you might have to get back to work. No problem. As long as you have access to to a computer with internet and a browser, you can log, you can enter your report once you get back home or back to back to work or uh, wherever you, you need to do it at your convenience. So I click on incidents. Now the default settings here on the navigation pane is uh, all calls last 30 days. So what this means, and this is a multi-record search, I will I will move over to the advanced search later. But essentially, on the multi-record search, it is going to bring you a table of all your incidents, all calls for the last 30 days. The reason we default to the 30 days is if we tried to do them for all time, it takes a little longer to load. Now, previously, it took a lot longer. Now, everything seems to be so much faster You know, as we've upgraded servers. And, and uh, so even if I did all time and I've done this for some departments, it still loads pretty fast. But just know that if you're looking for an incident and you can't find it, you probably is because it's it's older than 30 days. So just change your date range accordingly, and you'll be able to find that incident. The status is here. All calls, of course, is every call in the system. Incomplete calls is like what we have here. It's a red unlock icon. What this means is, is this incident is not complete, and I'll show you what that means here shortly. Completed calls are calls that are yellow locked. So this lock closes becomes yellow and it's complete. That means your firefighter finished the report and it's ready to be reviewed for by a company officer or above to be extracted um, by PENFERS. So I did know I didn't I remember that um, during my time at the Pennsylvania Expo, most departments I encountered said there was one key individual that would enter all reports. So your crews go out and do a paper report, then that gets delivered to an officer or chief and then he sits and enters the report. One of the things we talked about with a lot of these customers now is that the chief, because he may not have been on the scene, no longer has to be the person to do all the reports. He certainly should be the one that, that does the quality assurance of those reports, but he doesn't have to be the one that writes them all now. The person that goes on scene can do it, and in some ways, again, I'm not a lawyer, but legally that might even be better and give you a higher quality report overall. Um, so. Uh, something to keep in mind. Don't want to change how you guys do your processes, but I know chiefs out there are going, hmm, that might not be a bad idea after all, especially if you run quite a few calls. So that's the first tab, multi-record, oh, and reviewed calls, of course, are green, and that's locked, meaning they're ready to be extracted by PENFERS. And if you check the square, only my incidents, it will only show incidents assigned to you or ones you've started. So um, once we get rolling with that, I'll show you what all that means. Single record means if you know the incident number, and don't forget to put the year in. So if I wanted to find 2015-1, I would need to put in 2015-1. This incident would appear. Don't worry about a PCR. That's for um, EMS. It does have that as part of the search here, even though it's not um, an EMS account. Um, advanced search. In a nutshell, the advanced search gives you the ability to search by all of these fields. So if you know... Any of these, and it doesn't have to be just one, you can select multiple. If I know it was assigned to a certain individual, and I kind of know the address, or at least some part of the words in the address, I can do a search and find those reports very quickly. And it's an, it, this is what we call our advanced search. So this is great for when you're trying to drill down to specific incidents, or even just specific incident types. You can pull those out. Um, if I just want to see all my 
111 series calls, I can pull those out right here and, and that will show on the table. Okay, let's jump into an actual incident. Oops. All right, we've started this one, so I'm going to kind of proceed with it. And uh, guys, stop me along the way. And Mark, Lindsay, or Brittany, if anyone has questions um, that I'm either missing because I have my, I have my question pane detached, but when I start getting into this, I'll, uh, I might miss some of the questions. So if you need me to stop or pause, just unmute yourself, guys, and let me know, and we'll, we'll do a pause and, and further explanation. Okay, so we go to start an incident. Essentially, what will happen is this. You will click New. And I'm going to start a new one just so I can go page by page with all of you and doing a fresh incident. So basic info one, it's important for you to know that there are parts of our system. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves on is being in fully Enforce compliant, which means anything you see red is a required field for Enforce. It's not oh, emergency reporting is making me put this in here. Well, no, we're making you put it in there only because Enforce says it needs to be in here. And when we, when we export this data to the state and to Enforce, I can tell you, we've heard, and I've, this is a verbatim quote, we love your data. States love our data because it comes, it comes through error free. And they don't have to go in and find lots of corrections after the fact. You know, our validation tool is very good and matches Enfers. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty darn close. Um, we rarely get errors back. Oops, someone's trying to call me. Let me clear that. Stop. <laughs> Stand by, everybody. My Mac is taking control. All right, sorry about that. All right, so station, station one. And I'm going to fly through this because this is a lot of data field entry. Let's see where good time's looking good. Today's date, and you can fill in the date today or yesterday automatically by clicking that. Now, of course, if a couple days have passed, you want to make sure you put in the correct date. It will auto-fill the, the year. That is a requirement. This field is automatically filled with the incident year. Now, you'll see this next ID. Remember orange text hyperlinks. My next incident is number two. Now, depending on your jurisdiction, your dispatch agency, you may have a separate number here. By all means, enter what you're supposed to enter here in the system. So um, you can type in whatever um, incident number you're provided by your, your dispatch um, agency, your, your PSAP, um, public safety access point. However, you're currently entering incident numbers is the way you want to continue. Now, um, if you are an agency that's using Next, all right, one caveat I want to mention to you is this. It is possible, and I've asked this of multiple departments, and some say, oh, yeah, that's a big deal. Some say, oh, no big deal. They like to see consecutive numbers, one, two, three. What happens is, is like, say I go on a call right now, and it's a long incident. Um, you know, it's a multi-vehicle, you know, multi-vehicle collision, and lots of patients. It's a two-hour incident. And then here in Arizona, we will go pick up a snake, and we get fire departments get paged out to go pick up snakes, rattlesnakes and such. I go on, while the while the motor vehicle incident's going on. I get paged. Uh, my other station gets paged out for a snake call. They go pick it up, come back, and they enter it. Well, they would be technically incident number three. I was incident number two, but if they click next ID, it shows number two. So it's all dependent on your agency and whether or not you know you, you that that matters. It may not. They may just care that there's numbers sequential, and then the times won't be consecutive or in the right order, but the incident numbers will be. That's going to be a the, oops, That's going to be a decision that um, that you make organizationally. So here I'm going to pretend that it is incident number one one one, and the incident type. This gives you your Enfers codes. Now a, a trick here to remember. Bold orange text will auto scroll you down to that particular category. So in this case, if I went on a fire call, it will auto scroll me to the 100 series. If I went on a service call, it will auto scroll me to the 500 series. And also, just like on any other page I showed you before, if I hit Control or Command F, depending on my machine, I can search for keywords. So if I had a police matter call, I can type in the word police and it says, oh, it appears twice. 
and I can find it very quickly. And it would, if it were below the view, the viewpoint of the screen right now, it would take. I can, I can go uh, automatically to that particular keyword. So in this case, call it a. Oh, this was one I haven't had. Defective elevator, no occupants. So that everybody is basic one. You'll notice that all these red fields are filled in. If you have a given or received, which the beauty of this, especially in Pennsylvania, is. Um, and this will be outside the scope of today's training, but there is an agency friends to where you can share incident data uh, when you run, when you give or receive aid and you select it here. And um, that's something we can talk about again when we're on site um, or you can reference it in our webinar archives or knowledge base articles. But the beauty of being in Pennsylvania, if you're running mutual aid with each other, you can share basic information about the incident um, and basically tie incidents together. Um, great tool and no better place in Pennsylvania to do that because you guys are all um, all uh, on our system. Um, so a couple questions are come in. I'm going to hit those real quickly. Okay, what about an EMS call? So Edward's asking, what about an EMS call? So here, let's go ahead and change the incident type. Um, on an EMS call, the 300 series, I'm going to go with 320, 321. Now, nothing really changes because if you don't have our EPCR, it just knows that it's a it's a 321. If you have to document patient info, um, I'll show you here where you can document some of that info. The rest of it will have to go into the narrative. And then um, Jeff asks, Jeffrey asks, what's a dispatch run number? Great question. This one is a unique identifier generated by the department's dis dispatch center. This, depending on your agency, this can match the incident number. Okay, or it can be different. For example, I, this might be my call number 111 for my department, but because the dispatch agency dispatches police, fire, multiple fire departments, it could be call number 561 here in the dispatch center's uh, system. So often, not always, depending on what the CAD produces, incident numbers for the agency, dispatch run number could be for the dispatch, the communication center, Often, though, these may match. So um, that's the difference, um, but it's not always different. So I hope that, uh, hope that answers your question, Jeff. Hazmat released. I just want to mention this one because um, it's often overlooked. Um, if I go on a, any kind of call where there is some kind of leak, um, these do not automatically trigger a hazmat call. The only time it triggers the hazmat, and I say call, but it's really the hazmat end first pages, is if you select this. Special hazmat action or require, uh, required or spill is greater than 55 gallons. If I select that and click save, now my dynamic pages include these three pages about hazmat. But if it's just a, you know, gasoline spill, say, we're on a motor vehicle and we've got some gasoline, motor vehicle collision and the gasoline, there's a little bit of a gasoline leak. If I click that, it does not require the hazmat pages. So these are called our dynamic pages. So what I don't want to bog us down with today is you can get crazy here on an incident. So for example, if I made this a fire call and I click and it, then there was a hazmat involved with greater than 55 gallons, I now have these pages. But I can also, oh, I had civilian injury, I had a firefighter injury, I need to record people involved, there was equipment involved, there were fire suppression factors, okay, person under the age of 18 was involved, in an enclosed building, with detectors, with a partial system, and it was an intentional fire. Now look what happens to my pages. Anfer says, you got to fill all this in. This, I think, there might be one other one of the BEMS if you have that. This is about as crazy as it gets. In most instances, guys, for most of your calls, it's going to be this. I'm going to keep it real simple for today. We'll even make it a 300, 300 series call. No hazmat, except for a little bit of gasoline on the ground. And... We had no fire service casualties. And here, I'm going to select yes only because I can show you a way to document at least some patient information if you're not um, uh, without the full EPCR. So I'll show you that, but now I click save and now it looks a lot more manageable. But just know 
these buttons based on the incident type that you select, there'll be a lot to choose from. Many times it defaults to no. Be careful here because your firefighters are like my firefighters. If it's one required and already filled in for them, they click next and move on. But take a moment as you're learning the system and learning the different components here to kind of read and make sure you're answering these questions correctly because you're going to be able to pull some valuable, enter valuable data and then be able to extract that data later on as you run reports um, for your community on what type of calls you're running. Okay, next. Very simple. Basic two is very simple. Basic three gives you the ability to enter your street addresses. Now, um, time permitting, I know we're coming. Here's, so guys, here's where we're at, and I just want to give you a heads up. I knew we would run long just because there's so much to cover. So if you need to bail um, at the top of the hour, remember this will be recorded. What I will do is I'll make sure we get through this entire incident report and then address questions, and then they'll probably take us just maybe 10 minutes or so past the hour. Um, but I do understand if you have other commitments that you need to go, just know this will be recorded and eventually posted on 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 our website. So I'm going to start flying a little faster here because this is very straightforward information. I'm putting in, uh, I'm going to go with uh, basic info and I have no idea what the uh, zip code is there in Harrisburg, but we'll put one in there anyway. Um, again, red fields are required, property use. Um, You'll notice um, when you start using these, and those of you that have done Enfro's report, you probably know 419 is a residential, um, one or two family residential, 429 is multifamily, triple eight, they put the fire station as a storage. Don't ask me why, but triple eight's a firehouse. Basic four. So here, two things I want you to keep in mind here. One, this is where you add all your people and apparatus. If someone responds POV, I like putting it here because you don't have to have a, uh, an apparatus that requires times because when you're responding POV, unless it's time stamped over the radio um, at your communication center, your times may not be accurate. So here we're going to say um, Trey responded POV as did Christine. So now they're, they're involved but not on an apparatus. So if they, this is not necessarily if they go POV to the station to get an apparatus. This is if they respond from where they're at to the scene POV this is where I recommend putting it. Now adding an apparatus, this is where you have an actual apparatus response. So here we've got engine one, you will populate this drop down in the administration module. Response mode, believe it or not, Enfers doesn't care about response mode, so it's not red. I do recommend selecting one of these, and it's really helpful when you run analytics for responses um, for times, because sometimes lights and sirens, you wanna get there quickly, so you want a good response time. I know in our jurisdiction, we could draw downgrade to no lights and sirens based on what was coming over the radio. The person's been sick for two days, complaining of nausea. Don't need to go lights and sirens barreling through the town um, for that. So you can select that. Now trick here, click today, fill dates. Now your dispatch time, say it was at 0900 and, and one second. Go ahead and click fill times here. The reason I suggest this is because Sure, they're not all going to be the same times, but instead of having to fill each field in, you just have to go through and fill in the updated numbers. So if the alarm and dispatch were the same time, for example, I went in route at 9.02. I just have to change that in the seconds. I arrived at 9.06 and 50 seconds. Um, now the X is here. I realize en route date is not necessarily required, and that will, that is actually one of the fields you as an administrator can turn red if it is a field that you want to require. Enfers doesn't require it, therefore it's not red here. I cleared the scene at 9.30, and I don't need these additional times, um, unless you as an agency require them. Um, but these cannot be turned on red, just the en route date and time. And so now, as long as I've got everything required here, and the, the times are consecutive, so if I happen to put in, you know, nine, 901 here, I'm going to get an error message because, of course, my cleared scene time has to be after any of the other times listed here. Notice that Trey and Christine are grayed out. They are not available because they came POV, but Craig and Tim took the engine and they're on scene. You can also add the role of what they did on the scene. Okay, so here we did EMS, provided ALS, save, 
and you can also do it's it's not required it is optional okay so that is basic four in a nutshell really fast just so we can kind of get things rocking and rolling here um, I tried to add an apparatus Robert says and it won't say what I've entered remember these three buttons here don't use your browser button use these the save and stay is the floppy disk icon those of you that remember floppy disks this is save and go back to the previous page this is save and go next okay so I click that save and go next it will take me back to the main basic four page and as long as this little rectangle is green you've entered everything correctly for engine one if it's red some, most likely something's wrong with the times look and see if they're consecutive make sure you didn't miss any of the required times and then go back in and correct it don't forget to on a if you have a call around midnight if you fill dates but you just you went out at 11:59 on the 30th but you went available on um, June 1st or July 1st that date has to change um, if the time is after midnight and that is a common mistake especially late night calls we all we've made I've had crew members come to me and go I can't get it to go green what's wrong when was the call oh it was around midnight oh did you change the date here so just keep that in mind that that's it you'll make that one I've made it <laughs> I want to go green um, so that's basic four and then of course you can keep adding multiple apparatus um, depending on how many responded to the scene do a quick pause for questions um, will the CAD enter dates and times automatically if you have a CAD interface the answer is yes and that makes entering this whole page a beautiful thing. My guys, they were like, oh, thank God, we were able to have a CAD interface, and um, we got a CAD interface, and man, it makes it so much easier to enter all the times. Um, but that require that does require a CAD interface, Alan. Um, Edward's asking, if you save something, can it be corrected if you notice a mistake after you save it? You bet. So for example, I've just saved it, and depending on my level of permissions in the incident module, I can actually unlock this call if it were locked and go in and make a correction. So yes, absolutely. And another question that kind of goes with that too, Edward, is if you have a CAD link and the CAD pushes out wrong times, can I go in and correct those times? Yes, the user overwrite can overwrite any automatic entry in the system, except for the CAD narrative, which that's in the CAD, that's the CAD narrative that gets pushed over. Um, but again, we're getting a little bit ahead of the game. Okay, basic four is done. Basic five, primary action taken. Enfers wants at least one. So here we know typically EMS, Provided ALS, any other action taken? If it was a wreck, we did um, extricate and disentangle, and then action two if there if there were any. Um, I will quickly mention here on any fire call, even though they are not required fields, use these losses and pre-incident value. There is a I think a couple reports in our system that you can present to the community how much loss fire loss you had versus the value, and that gives you your potential report. And you know if we had a million dollars worth of potential loss of structures because of fire this this year and again I'm just throwing out some crazy numbers but we only had a you know hundred thousand dollar loss you guys made some good stops so um, good good fields here not required so those that review fire reports you're going to want to take a good look at, at these two fields here okay moving on this is where you can add a person now this is not their patient care report but if you wanted to document okay patient in vehicle number one I can put that their basic info in here very basic name date of birth telephone and address okay notice things are going green here as long as I'm green that means I'm good to go for for penfers and for enfers so here that's green now you'll notice that I haven't even gone to the narrative or files or custom fields yet um, Nenfers doesn't care about any of this so therefore it's defaulted to green but I know we care about our narratives big time so this is where your 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 local QA comes into play and you can edit your narrative um, and update everything that you need here um, you can even make annotations I know there were times where I you know someone's done a narrative and then I would put down here at the bottom um, amended by because there's only one instance you know and then go in and make amendments without altering what was above files this is great guys this page if you happen to want to scan in the handwritten report that was done 
or you have photos from the scene, load them here. This is a great place to make it part of the permanent record. And if you have a PIO, I use this a lot when I was PIO because um, the guys would say, hey, Tom, we had a wreck on the freeway. Um, got some pictures for you. Take a look. We loaded it to incident number, you know, 111. Um, and the media, get, the media wants you to contact them. So I would go here and pick and choose photos that I can share with the press. But beyond sharing, being able to do after action reports, all of it will be stored here and it very easily accessed. And it's super easy to upload it. Just you know, connect your camera, pull the files in, and upload it like you would um, really any other software that you would use to manage, manage files. Next up, custom questions. There's none in this system, but it is turned on. What this allows you to do, and some of you may be brainstorming here, um, anything that Enfers or Penfers doesn't require, but you want to document, say you sent a rider in on an ambulance, another one of your, your volunteers wrote in and you got reimbursed from the ambulance company, you can document that here. If you want to document certain mutual aid with certain departments, you can document that here. That's part, you create that in the administration module. Um, and I, like I promised, I will quickly go over to the administration module once we wrap this incident up. Um, but again, we are now at the top of the hour. So if anyone has to depart, you won't hurt my feelings, I understand. Um, I'm staying until we get this part completed and do a quick peek into the admin module and then uh, stick around for questions too. All right, authorize. So here, you'll notice if you have supervisory level permissions for the administration or for the incident module, you will have the option to complete and review it simultaneously. Most report writers will not have this checkbox. So what will happen is they will put in their password. The incident is now locked. It is ready for review by a chief or company officer or whoever is doing the review of those incidents. So here, the next step is I go into authorize. So the reviewer will then review it, put in their password, and now it is green locked and ready to be exported. What you'll notice here is you can have one person assigned to the report, they appear here. You can also change that and reassign it. That's why that orange text is here. Who completed it and who reviewed it. Okay, and those can be different people. Quickly, if I need to change, if I, the incident's not completed, but I say, okay, um, I may have taken command of the scene, but I passed it to you. Um, you know, Chief Smith, I'm going to transfer, I'm going to give, I'm going to reassign this call to you. And we'll have the commissioner. He's in charge. So now I've reassigned it to him. And if I unlock this, all right, it's not going to show as an incomplete report, but it will show back on my homepage that I have one incident needing to be reviewed. I can click through to it and it takes me right to that incident. And if I'm reviewing it and I notice, you know, this narrative, in fact, wow, there's no narrative. You need to go back and do this narrative. What's cool is I can make this incomplete. Oh, and it's not turned on in admin. Ah, okay. There's a trick. What will happen is in admin, you'll turn, make it yes. And you can send an email to that person to correct that incident. So not only will it show up as an incomplete incident now for Tim, Commissioner, Commissioner, Commissioner Solibay, it will have an incomplete incident listed for him. It will also send him an email saying, hey, you better fix this, this, this uh, report. And you can put little notes in there on what they need to fix. Last thing I want to show you is on history details is it gives you a running log of everything, all the historical component of that incident from the time it was created to all the accesses and changes to it. So it's your, it's your log to see who's been in there doing what. And even if they went to go access it, to view it or print it, it will also show here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this report, or lock this report. And so that report is completed. And now we're good to go. And it will appear here under all calls all time, and there's our incident. We're ready to be plucked from uh, uh, by PenFirst for reporting. So, let's take a look here. Okay, a um, couple questions. Um, looks like they're being answered. Uh, 
No, as a comment, they should do lost values due to grants required. Excellent. Edward's mentioning that grants want you to document those uh, the, the loss versus the value of the property because a lot of grants are looking for that. Excellent point. Thank you, Edward. And is there a way to run a month report on who um, who went on the call? Uh, Russ, yes. Um, there's a lot of reports there for, for incidents. It's a very, our, the reports for incidents are pretty powerful. And again, being that it's outside the scope of today's session, I would love to go show you all of that. But um, as you explore it, and uh, you'll see some ones that I know will match what your department needs. Okay, so that wraps up incidents. Um, again, if the question pops into your mind, just, just let me know. Um, Edward asks, will it also run status per month and types by year? Oh yeah, lots of incidents uh, reports for that, Edward. Um, how do we export our firehouse reports using this system? Um, so that's a more complicated process that is also on the PenFirst help page. Uh, let's see if I go to the right one. It'll give you the rundown here. Um, on doing that, the export from Firehouse and then um, importing into the system. And I know, um, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong, I know that the Office of the State Fire Commissioner can give them a hand as well with uh, entering, um, importing data that they've exported from Firehouse. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Awesome. Okay. All right. Like I promised, I know we're going to wrap up here. Admin, this is your control panel. Again, like I mentioned, it's good to have just a few people have access here, but this is where, whoops, I clicked too fast. This is where you set up your personnel list, your apparatus list, and that one thing that I wanted to show you that was really cool is this. You select yes here, and I think all new customers, it's gonna be defaulted to yes, so you won't run into what I just did, and this is for the incident incomplete notification. I will go back after I wrap up here to show you what that does, because it's pretty cool. Um, personnel list, um, someone had a question on permission settings. Here's where you set permission settings and I'm clicking fast to everybody only because of the time but bottom line is you can this is where you decide who gets what access to what what level of access to each of the modules in the system right here under security this is also where you will create the login logins for each of the uh, users in your department so if you're like me and Mark and a lot of us trainers this we have fun with this because it's building your system so I imagine since many of you are on with us today um, you're here because you're going to manage the system or be at least a key person involved with this. Um, so this is where you can kind of, kind of have a lot of fun, um, building your system and getting everything ready to go, to go, to actually go live and start using it. So back here, under administration, this incomplete in, in incident, incomplete notification, here's what it'll do. And I wanted to show, this is what I was hoping to show you. So here, if I unlock the incident, it makes it complete, but unlocked. Now, if I click make incomplete, I have the ability to send an email out to Tim, Commissioner Solovey, send if an email is associated with his personnel information with the page I was just on in admin, it will autofill here with the, and it'll give you a subject line. And then you can put in, Chief, you better fix this fast. All right, and then you can put in any notification or anything that they need to um, fix on that particular um, report. They'll get an email. I'm just going to put mine in here so Chief doesn't get any rude messages. I click Send Notification. Three things happen. One, it goes to incomplete. Two, I get an email. Three, if, if this were my, my incident, I would now back on my home page have one incomplete incident assigned to me. So it's really just a cool tool, um, especially if you need someone to go and fix up a report. All right. Well, we are 10 minutes past the hour. Um, almost everybody stuck around, so I can't thank you enough for uh, for going past the top of the hour with me. Hopefully this, between admin or between the welcome page and incidents, you've got a good feel now for our system. Um, don't forget to use the other resources available to you here um, with support and with help. And then, uh, again, look for future announcements of when we're coming to your state uh, to do training. And then, of course, if you want to revisit anything we've talked about today or you want to go back and join us again for another session or other members of your department, here is the schedule. And, again, it's at our website, emergencyreporting.com forward slash product forward slash penfers. So as we wrap up, I want to see if we've got any other questions that need to be answered. And I also want to reach out to 
Lindsay, to Brittany, and to Mark, and to see if there's anything else they would like to add in closing. Tom, I, this is Mark. I just wanted one clarification. I was hoping Lindsay or, or you could help me with. Um, has it been decided now that their Enforce export will be done automatically by the commissioner's office? I've, one of the questions I had answered uh, manually by month, but that may be incorrect. Uh, I see that that may have been decided otherwise. If Lindsay could follow up on that, I'd sure appreciate it. Yes, Lindsay. Lindsay will have. She's she she knows the process. If you want to chime in, Lindsay, and let everyone know. Yeah, so um, once calls have been marked as reviewed, then on a regular basis, the state will be able to go in and um, automatically grab everybody's incident uh, report. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank Excellent. Um, so we got three more questions. Actually, five more questions. Awesome. Okay. Under apparatus, are we limited to the size of the ID? Yes. Only five digits because... Enfers only allows five, dis five digits, Roger or Robert, for the uh, uh, for the ID. Can we create templates for routine calls? Hmm, Josh, that's a good good question. No, there's not really templates per se. Well, it will autofill the data, um, which I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what you're thinking about um, right now. So no full-on templates per se. Um, is there a recorder training session? Uh, a recorded training session on the admin section. Yes, Jeff, let me show you where that's at. So if we go back out to this page, so again, I know it's hard to see on a small screen, but emergency reporting.zendesk.com should take you to the help page. And under admin, we have multiple knowledge base articles, and we should also have, let's see, the recordings of the of the training, the virtual uh, Thursday sessions aren't here, but that's easy enough to find under webinar archives. And if you just do a keyword search for admin, I've got three. So admin module part one and two. These will be a great starting, a jumping point for you, Jeff, to uh, or Jeffrey to uh, to learn about the administration module. Uh, will we have the ability? Lee asked, Will we have the ability to enter equipment inventory? Okay, um, the answer um, for just the pen first package, let me go back to that page, um, is no, only because that requires the maintenance module. You can enter, of course, in the administration module, you can enter your apparatus information, but the associated equipment requires the administration module to be able to populate um, the, the trucks with all of that equipment. Yeah, recorded. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Um, can reports be emailed to bu uh, Bureau... Um, officials, if so, how? Um, Ted, yes, you can save those reports as a PDF. You can even export it as an Excel file and then save it and then email it like you would any attachment. Um, for the sake of time, um, I'm, it's, it's a you know, couple step process, but the bottom line is yes, you can, absolutely. Um, Gary's already had his question answered regarding the uh, getting his username and password. Um, they are, and this is, they've got, eventually they'll have to go through about 2,400 departments. So um, they're on it. Um, they have a backlog right now, but they are working very, very quickly to get that address so you can get your login. So, yes, Russell, you're right. There's a lot to learn, and uh, we're just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg here in an hour. Uh, but just know that the resources are out there. Um, take advantage of them, and then keep an eye out for when we're coming to the state and and try to attend one of those on-site sessions because then we can be face-to-face -face and answer questions and go through the system in even more depth. So, all right, with that, um, we will call it a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Pennsylvania, welcome to the emergency reporting family. Um, like I said earlier, we are very, we consider ourselves very, priv consider ourselves very privileged to have you part of the emergency reporting family, and we want to be able to deliver very, not only a very good and user-friendly product, but very, very good customer service to you. So um, as this is rolls out, again, there's a, between us and the Office of the State Fire Commissioner, there's a lot going on, a lot of things to manage and handle. So please be patient as things get rolling. But I guarantee you at this time next year, we're going to be having a lot of great conversations and a lot of success stories on how you're entering your data. So with that, um, if Lindsay, Brittany, or Mark don't have anything else to add, we'll uh, go ahead and wrap up our session for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mark.
thank you, Brittany, and thanks, Lindsay, for um, all your help in getting all these questions answered. A really good session today. Um, I will hang tight for another 30 seconds to a minute, make sure there's no other questions, and uh, then we'll go ahead and close out the session. You, Richard, you bet. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay, everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you again for everything today.